Hi, this is David Artinian with Artinian Gems. Welcome to part two of our simple, non-scientific guide on how to look at blue sapphire. In our previous discussion, we talked about the colors. I mean, color with colored stones is king, and that's very, very involved. We talked about hue, tone, and saturation, how all three of those affect the desirability of, in this case, a blue sapphire. Now, today we're gonna to talk about clarity. Now, I love looking at clarity because I love looking at inclusions in gems. Well, the first grade is eye clean. That means that a trained grader at about eight inches from the gem, looking at under uh, an ot light, say, uh, they'll turn the gem over, they'll look at it, and they'll say, can I see anything in that gem? Uh, that's the top grade you'll ever get in a, uh, in a colored stone, in this case with a sapphire. Then the second grade is slightly included. That means that the trained grader, when they look at that gem, they can barely see something going on in there. It might be a silkiness. It could be a crystal, a crack, or something that's affecting the clarity. And then the third grade is moderately included, which means um, you can see it fairly easily. Uh, and it's like, okay, that's right in your face. It might affect, oh, it, in this case, it probably would be affecting the, the brilliance of the gem. And then there's heavily included, which is like, whoa, that's right in your face. Uh, borderline fish tank material, uh, cracks are visible. Uh, it might affect the stability of the gem when setting and so on. And then there's severely included, definitely fish tank material or ornamental jewelry material. So what affects clarity in a blue sapphire? Well, obviously you have cracks. For example, like there, there would be a crack that goes through the gem but that hasn't caused the gem to split. Now, sapphire is a very strong material, so it can be partially cracked, but still hold together. Then you get fingerprints, which kind of is, that's exactly what it seems like. It's like a fingerprint, it's a, it's a partially healed crack. Then you have crystals inside. Then you get color banding. In blue sapphire in particular, the color of a sapphire is, comes through color banding. And so how does that color banding affect the gemstone? So let's get down to the nitty gritty of looking at a blue sapphire. Now, oftentimes, like when I'm in the field and I'm looking at gems, I'm in Sri Lanka or I'm in some other part of the world, Thailand or whatever, and I'm looking at faceted gems. So you're looking at a faceted gem, you don't have equipment, microscope, and so on, and you need to judge very quickly because you often with the best deals, the best gems, you don't have extended periods of time to sit there and analyze the gem. All you really need is a flashlight and some form of magnification. Now I use my visor, I use, or a loop, but you can even just look at the gem as long as you've got good vision with a simple flashlight. So let's take a quick look at how I buy my gems when I'm overseas. So the very first gem we're going to look at is this four and a half carat beautiful oval royal blue sapphire. So I'm, I have my flashlight and I have just my normal ot light and so when I look at it, I can see it sparkles really beautifully. And I'm looking at it, see how does it face up? It faces up really nice. Now to look at this gemstone to see uh, what it's got going on inside, you really have to turn it over. So I'm gonna look at it from the back. Oh, I see some color banding. Now in a really fine gemstone, color banding is uh, gonna be a normal routine thing you're gonna see. And then I'm gonna take my flashlight and I'm gonna shine it on the side. This is my trick. Look at that gemstone. This gemstone is top clarity. Now let's look at this gemstone. It's a 3.09 carat uh, oval blue sapphire. The color is super good too. Now to, to look at this, we're gonna turn it over. Again, you can see a little bit of color banding, which is normal in sapphire. Now let's use the light. Let's see what we can see. Oh, there you go. When you use the light on the side, it fires up any crystals that are inside. So let's turn it. Oh, there's another one. Fires up right there. This would be a slightly included gemstone. Finally, let's look at this blue sapphire. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm suspecting that this gem's a little bit sleepy from silkiness. So what I'm going to do is take my light. I'm going to shine it on the side. Oh, there it is. See how it just kind of looks hazy inside? That's because there's a lot of silk, which is titanium oxide. It's a coloring agent in blue sapphire. You see it evident in star sapphires, and you often will see it in um, a gemstone 
that is unheated. Now this is an unheated uh, blue sapphire. Now here's a 3.33 carat pear-shaped blue sapphire from Sri Lanka. And whereas the other gemstones that we looked at previously, they have visible color banding. However, the color banding is not noticeable face up. When you see a gemstone like this and this color banding is a noticeable face up, now that will affect the value of the gem. So again, let's turn this gem and let's look at it and see where the color banding is. You can see there's a whole section through the middle that has very little color. Now much of the color of this gemstone is coming from uh, the band of color that's towards the culet, which is at the tip of the stone. And when the light flat, you know, when the light shines in the gem when it's faced up, it appears to be more blue because the light is reflecting from the back of the gem throughout the rest of it. So this gem, uh, again, is, is quite a beautiful gem, but it is affected by uh, the color banding. So there's my quick and easy guide on looking at the clarity of blue sapphire. If you're looking at a tray of gems, you can just take your flashlight and you can run it along the side of the gem. That way the gem is going to illuminate any crystals or any cracks or any silkiness is going to fire up. I was recently looking at a really beautiful gem in a store. We were, we were looking at it under regular light. It was a client's gem and it looked like quite a valuable gem. And, but then I took my flashlight and I shone it on the side and that gem was completely filled with silk. So, you know, I could tell it was a little bit sleepy, but it wasn't until I shone the light on it that it became evident that this gem uh, had a value that was much, much lower than a comparable gem that was crystalline. So the moral of the story is uh, it's simple and you can do it yourself. If you have further questions, just feel free to reach out. Uh, you can reach out to us by phone. You can go to our website at artiniangems.com and I'd be happy to talk to you, answer any further questions that you might have. You have a great day and I hope to see you soon.